great thing about air pollution back in the 1970s and 80s was the as farmers, thing about air pollution, as farmers, we got free sulfur. This? Absolutely, oh we got goodness. free sulfur. It was free money. Okay, so clearly we've identified <laughs> who the dollar and cents person is on the farm here. Brian's concerned about how much sulfur is going to cost us. Yep. What I'm concerned about is. Hey, I want to live a little bit longer. I want a better environment. Oh, whatever, dear. I'm willing to spend a little money on sulfur. <laughs> now, with sulfur, this is one of those nutrients. Over the past 10 years, I'd say, more so than ever before, sulfur is getting a lot of attention as to uh, what kind of impact it'll have in corn, but now soybeans and other crops as well. We're going to talk about sulfur, some different forms of sulfur, and how you may use it on your farm. As always, take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app to see how much sulfur your crop needs. But this is a secondary nutrient. It's not a micro. It a lot of times gets lumped in by people as a micro. No way. It's a secondary nutrient. You need lots of sulfur in many cases. And here's the problem with sulfur. It's leachable. So just like with nitrogen, you need to put sulfur on almost every year in most cases, as long as you have good drainage in your soil. All right, so what are some of the common sources of sulfur and when are people doing this? We see a lot of ammonium sulfate going out now as a nitrogen source right at planting time or shortly thereafter. And you say, okay, well, you're focused on the nitrogen component. Yeah, but guess what? There's a lot of sulfur in there. So you're gonna get quite a bit of sulfur out. You're gonna get plenty for your whole season if you're using any decent amount of ammonium sulfate out there. And the other good thing is, your nitrogen is in the ammonium form, which is protected from leaching, uh, at least for a certain period of time out in your fields. So that's a positive thing on both fronts. There are so many ways you can get sulfur, though. In addition to ammonium sulfate, there's manure. We get water treatment lime. There's some sulfur in that. There are plenty of different liquid products. We have a lot of ways to get sulfur out there. You can use it pre, you can use it post. Whatever you want to do, here's the point. You need sulfur in your crop, and also, the reason why you need sulfur in your crop, yes, it's important in many phases of the plant, but let's talk about one specific thing, and Darren mentioned ammonium sulfate. Sulfur really helps nitrogen get utilized better. So what I'm trying to say here is if you're lacking in sulfur, you're gonna find that you need to apply more nitrogen to get the same yield. Well, does that sound like a good thing for the pocketbook or the environment? No way. So have the right amount of sulfur in your crop, in your soil, you're going to find you have higher yields and better overall use efficiency out of your nitrogen and other elements. Sulfur often has a lot of focus in corn crops and if we're short we'll see yellowing towards the top of the plant because it's one that once it's in that plant it's going to stay put so the new growth is going to be where it's going to show the shortage. You can also do some plant tissue testing to find out where your sulfur levels are in the plant. Another thing if you're raising vegetable crops or a garden, if you're short of sulfur many times you have vegetables that don't quite taste as good for some reason. You don't know what's lacking. Sulfur may be that thing. Well, sulfur is important if you want high yields. So is weed control. You've got to stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how coming up next.